In this um, clip, we're going to look at the right side of the heart, and we're going to go into the internal features um, for the right side of the heart. Right now, you're looking at a posterior view of the heart. Remember that wrinkle or sulcus helps us separate uh, and recognize the right ventricle versus the left ventricle. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to open up this right side of the heart. First, I'm going to go at the base. Remember, that's what the top or superior end of the heart is called. And I'm going to find two vessels, their veins, called the superior and inferior vena cavi. And I'm going to put my probe down through the superior vena cava, and it will exit out through the inferior vena cava. So this end is the superior vena cava, and this end is the inferior vena cava. And both of these vessels feed into the right side of the heart and deposit blood into the right atrium. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the probe to open up the right atrium. So I'm going to cut open those veins. And now we're going to be able to see inside the right atrium. And you'll note it doesn't look like much. It's a very small chamber on the superior end of the heart. And essentially, it's an exit, or an entrance, excuse me, uh, into the heart uh, for blood entering the right side of the heart. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down along the um, edge of this wrinkle, this sulcus, towards the apex, which will allow me to open up the right ventricle of the heart. To do that, I'm going to turn the heart upside down. So I'm cutting down into the right side of the heart towards that apex. Remember, I can't get all the way to the apex because the right side of the heart does not include the apex. Remember that the apex is part of the left ventricle of the heart. All right, so now I'm going to flip the heart back ups, upright, and now I can open up the right side of the heart. Okay, so here again is the right atrium we looked at earlier. Down here is the inside of the right ventricle. Note the thickness of the wall of the right ventricle. It's much thicker because it's a stronger pump than the atrium. Note the thickness of the wall of the atrium is much narrower. Between the right atrium and the right ventricle is a valve. And that's what this material here is. It's very thin but strong material. This valve prevents backflow, just like any valve does. Uh, it's called the tricuspid valve. Securing this valve in place are these little string-like structures. You might have heard the phrase heart strings. These string-like structures are called chordae tendini, and they prevent the valve from inverting due to blood pressure. The chordae tendini are held in place by little muscles called papillary muscles. If we look at the wall of the ventricle, we can see the major layers of the wall of the ventricle. The surface of the heart is called the epicardium. The muscular middle layer is called the myocardium. And the thin, shiny inner layer is called the endocardium. If I open up the right side a little bit more, we can see this feature coming across the right side of the heart. It kind of looks like a papillary muscle that stretches across the heart. And this structure that's stretched across the probe is called the moder moderator band. And the moderator band allows for electrical conduction to more efficiently get across to the right side of the heart. OK, so we're going to continue opening up the right side of the heart. This is the posterior view. Here's the opening we made earlier. We're seeing the right atrium and the right ventricle. Now what I'm going to do, do is find the major vessel that leads away from the right ventricle to carry blood away from the right ventricle and towards the lungs. To find that vessel, I'm going to flip the heart over and look at an anterior view of the heart. 
And the vessel I'm looking for is this one. It's called the pulmonary trunk. Note that it is on the right side of the heart. Here's our sulcus. And this would be the right ventricle, and here's the left. So I'm going to put the probe down into the pulmonary trunk and prove that it does, in fact, attach to the right ventricle. So now I'm going to flip it back over. And here we can see that probe does, in fact, connect to the right ventricle. So the vessel, again, that I just found is called the pulmonary trunk, and it carries blood from the right ventricle up towards the lungs. Looking back again at an anterior view of the heart, I'm now going to finish opening up the right side of the heart by cutting along the probe down towards the right ventricle. To do that again, I'm going to turn the heart upside down. Now I've got it right side up again. Again, I just cut through the right ventricle. And I'm going to open this up so that we can see the inside of that blood vessel, the pulmonary trunk. So here is the pulmonary trunk. The probe is in the pulmonary trunk. That's a major artery carrying blood away from the right side of the heart and towards the lungs. And right here, we've got a little valve called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Down here again, we've got the right ventricle. And I want to point out again the moderator band. You're getting a little bit better view of it here from the anterior side. And remember that moderator band allows electrical conduction across the right side of the heart. Here is another one of the cusps of the semilunar valve. I'm putting the probe down into it.